moving into vector calculus, and this is vector calculus related to uh, parametrics and particle motion. Um, there are other uses of vectors in calculus, but that's not going to be discussed here. Uh, some general notes on vectors uh, in calculus. If you have a parametric equation that represents position, it can be written in vector form, xt, yft. Uh, velocity and acceleration are simply first and second derivatives, as you would expect. The speed is the magnitude of the derivative of the velocity vector. Uh, if you don't remember magnitude from pre-cal, then it's the square root of your x component squared plus y component squared, uh, except do remember to use your velocity vector. Uh, and then the distance traveled. Does traveled have two L's? I don't know. Whatever. The distance traveled uh, is you could either do the uh, area from A to B under the absolute value of the velocity function. This is more for regular function notation. Um, that's mostly if, um, if you have something like your velocity is, if, if you can get it in a nice cute formula, t squared plus 3t. Uh, not, this first one is not as usable if you're in if you have parametrics. Uh, if you are in parametrics, then the distance traveled would be the arc length formula, uh, the length of the curve, which makes sense. The length of the curve is the distance traveled. Uh, so there you go. There's some stuff, uh, general notes on vectors. You may want to write that down. I don't know. You may just memorize it. It's up to you. Uh, let's do a couple of problems. And we are going to use calculator on a lot of these. Uh, we have this parametric equation that represents uh, an object in motion. And question one says, find the velocity and acceleration vectors for the object. Well, velocity is simply the derivative of position. So my velocity vector is going to be the vector, and we simply do the derivative of x and the derivative of y. So that'd be 3t squared and 2t. There's your velocity vector. Easy enough, right? The acceleration vector, simply do the derivative of the velocity vector. So that'd be 6t and 2. So there's your velocity and acceleration vector in terms of t. If I ask for one at a specific time, then, as you would expect, you simply plug that value of, of t in for the velocity vector. So my velocity vector at t equals 2 is going to be 3 times 2 squared and 2 times 2, which ends up being the vector 3 times 4, which is 12, and 2 times 2, which is 4. So there's your velocity vector. Uh, pretty easy stuff. The speed, remember speed is the magnitude of velocity. Now in part B, we've already found the velocity vector when t is 2. If I want speed, then that's going to be the magnitude of my velocity at 2, of my velocity vector at 2. Uh, I don't like that notation. I'm going to erase that. Uh, but the speed is going to be the square root of, and then you simply square each component. That will be 12 squared plus 4 squared, and then we'll clean that up. Uh, 12 squared is 144. 4 squared is 16. That's going to be the square root of, what, 160? That's kind of cute. Uh, which cleans up to, oh my gosh, I'm going crazy. That's 16 times 10, so that'll be 4 root 10. Wow, the world, am I simplifying stuff? Uh, speed would be measured in the same units as velocity. The only difference is speed does have uh, speed does not have direction, whereas velocity would. Uh, but speed is going to be measured in this case. It would be feet per second. So that would be my uh, speed unit. Uh, moving on, uh, same problem, but uh, moving on to a couple of different questions. Uh, what is the distance traveled on 0 to 3? Now, this is where it starts to get a little bit hairier, but distance traveled when you're dealing with parametrics or vectors is arc length. So my distance is going to be the area from 0 to 3, and then we'll use arc length under, and then the derivative of x is 3t squared squared plus the derivative of y is 2t all squared. And the length of the curve from 0 to 3 is the distance traveled. And we will simply throw that in the calculator to get an answer. There we go. And I punched it in. I got 28.728. And remember, distance 
is measured in feet for this problem. So the total distance traveled is 28.728 feet. Okay, when is the object at rest? Now, this is not something that was in that first little page of general notes, but if something is resting, it's not moving anywhere. So that means X and Y are not changing. So neither X nor Y change. Well, if neither X nor Y change, uh, in words of calculus, change is a derivative, so that means dx dt and dy dt equals zero. And the thing is, they have to, it has to happen at the same time. So let's find dx dt. I meant to change this question. Oh, well. dx dt. No, that's not dt. dx dt is 3t squared. Uh, and I'll set that equal to zero and find out when that equals zero and 3t squared equals zero at t equals zero. And then I'll do the same thing for dy. dy dt is 2t. I'll set that equal to zero. That also is zero at zero. So uh, since, that was kind of confusing, uh, since my dx dt and dy dt are zero when t is equal to zero, that means that at t equals zero, neither x nor y is changing. So the object is at rest when t is equal to zero, and we're dealing with seconds. So objects at rest at t equals zero. Uh, sometimes you will have times where the x is zero, so uh, but the y is not. So if I, if it turned out just for the sake of argument uh, that we had a problem where dx dt equals zero at t equals 1 and 3, and then you solve dy dt equals 0, and you get t equals 0 and 3, then if this were the case, then the object rests only at t equals 3, because that's the only time where both x and y are 0. So there you go. I think I'm going to erase that because it may be confusing for those of you who only read the notes. Anyway, all right, so uh, you find out when X and Y are both zero. I kind of killed that one dead. I beat that one to death. Give me a dead horse. What are all the other expressions I can think of? All right, uh, let's try a different one. Object moves along curve. Uh, X, Y position, X, Y plane, that position, X of T, Y of T. In this case, I gave you the derivatives. I gave you DX, DT, and DY, DT, and I also gave you the initial position. Uh, initial position means at T is equal to zero. So T is equal to zero. So I could take this information right here, and I know that X of zero is equal to two, and I know that Y of zero is equal to five. Okay. Uh, part A, a different type of question that, again, was not in those notes. Uh, what Find the y-coordinate at time t is equal to 3. Um, well, I know how y changes. dy dt tells me how y changes, um, but I don't have the actual function for y. Now, one thing you could try to do would be to find the antiderivative, but I intentionally chose one where the antiderivative is not easy. Um, or it may not even be possible. So in order to get the y-coordinate at time 3, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my y-coordinate at 3, I know I started at a position of 5. So I'm going to start with my initial position, which is 5. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the area under the curve to figure out how much y changes to 3. So I'm going to measure the change in y. I'm, whoops. I'm going to measure the change in y, which is e to the square root of t. I'm going to measure the change in y from 0 to 3, and then I will simply add that change to my initial position. Uh, I do know that my initial position was 5, so this problem, if I want my y-coordinate at time 3, then I will start at 5, and then I'm simply going to add the change from 0 to 3, dt. And again, that is something that we will simply throw in the calculator. And you get a y-coordinate of 15.275. So that will be your final answer for that one. Uh, find the speed of the object at time 2. 
Okay, well speed, we did talk about speed is the magnitude of velocity. So my speed is going to be the square root. And remember, we were given the velocity up here. We're given dx dt and dy dt. So my speed is going to be the square root of, and I'll plug 2 in, so 2 squared minus 4. Ooh, that's sexy. Plus, and then e to the square root of 2. That's not so sexy. And again, we will throw that in the calculator. So let me throw that in. And you get approximately 4.113. I will urge you to be uber careful with your parentheses on this one because I made a mistake the first time I punched it in. I went back and corrected it. Uh, when is the object moving to the right? Okay, again, another question that was not covered in those initial notes, but this is one of those, and all of these that weren't covered, we're just kind of thinking our way through it. Uh, if an object moves to the right, well, if something's moving right, that's the horizontal component that changes. So if something's moving to the right, I'm worried about dx dt. And if it moves to the right, that means dx dt will be something positive. But that's what I'm looking for in order for something to be moving to the right. And something's going to move to the right. Let's see, my dx dt is t squared minus 4. I'm simply going to find out when t squared minus 4 is greater than 0. I'll factor it, t plus 2, t minus 2. Uh, I know that's going to equal 0 at negative 2 and positive 2. And in order to find out when this thing is positive, I'm going to use a good old-fashioned number line. Plot my two, um, my two zeros, negative 2 and 2, both give me 0. And then I'll plot my test points, negative 3, 0, and 3. If I plug in negative 3, negative 3 squared is 9, minus 4 is positive. 0 squared minus 4 is negative. 3 squared is 9, minus 4 is positive. And be really careful because you may be tempted to say negative infinity to negative 2, and then 2 to infinity, but remember we're only looking at values of t greater than or equal to 0. Uh, so since t must be greater than or equal to 0, and that's kind of that should be rolling around in the back of your mind. And if it's not rolling around in the back of your mind, just go back and reread the problem. Uh, this thing, this object is moving to the right on the interval to to infinity because that's when dx dt was positive. Uh, so there you go. There's some uh, blitz on vectors. I'm pretty sure that was the last problem I wanted to do. It was. Um, and so there is some vector stuff. Yeah.